Carmen London is a cyber safety expert and she's the executive director of YSAFE. But before that, Yaz unexpectedly became the very public face of the New South Wales Police Force when a moment that she shared with a random stranger in Martin Place went viral on YouTube. But Yaz doesn't do things in half measures. She's also a world champion swimmer. So we're going to talk about all sorts of interesting things with Yasmin London today. And it's uh, her that I welcome right now. Hi, Yaz. <laughs> Hi, Stacey. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Good, good. Yaz, let's just talk about uh, the start of your policing career. Mm -hmm. What was it for you that made you decide that you wanted to be a police officer? Oh, look, I, I think it's incredibly cliche, but I really wanted to help people people and I wanted to choose a career that had meaning you know mm. I didn't want to be stuck behind a computer all day as well sure. so I really enjoyed the variety behind uh, what the police offers in terms of career trajectory and variety. It seems to me that uh, in making a decision to join the police force that it might have been a very heart-centered decision for you. Definitely. Would I be right in saying that? Absolutely I think you hit the nail on the head pretty much everything that I do is, is heart-centered I think you really have to go with with your gut that's something that I really advocate for and you know it turned out to be the right decision for 13 years. Right <laughs> well you've done a lot of different things throughout your career and, and we'll get to some of those shortly but I'm just wondering uh, when you made that decision to join the police force did you think about the danger? Yes uh, well my mother reminded me constantly of the dangers of carrying a gun and the situations that I'd be in. Yeah. Uh, it, yes I did but it wasn't something that dominated my thought process. I think you know, you, that just comes with the job. Um, I was confident in my ability to handle situations. I knew I was good under pressure. Um, but I suppose in the end, you never know what can happen on any given day. Mm. So yeah, there was always that risk there. And were you good under pressure because you were a world champion swimmer? <laughs> <laughs> I had some experience. Right, yeah. tell us about that. Oh, definitely. Well, I swam competitively for about seven years. I was on the Australian team for four of those years. Mm -hmm. Um, I suppose my, my claim to fame is that I, I won a gold and silver medal at the World Cup events in uh, Malmo in Sweden and in Paris. So, yes, I had definitely had experience uh, trying to perform under pressure. Mm. So I felt confident I could do that um, in the police force too. Mm. So that set you up really well as a police officer where yeah. I'm sure that almost daily you were confronted with tricky situations. Mm. Yeah, look, as a police officer, we deal with people on the worst day of their lives. Um, and, you know, I, I really do believe that, that becoming uh, effective in those situations comes from experience. It is a habit to confront your fears and to find the ways that you are able to overcome them. It's a habit to confront your fears. I believe that, yes. Right. You know, I, I try to think about things that I can do, even, you know, micro tasks each day that might be really difficult for me or I might be fearful of and when you've done that a few times once you've created that habit you're able to look back on your brief of evidence effectively and and show yourself that you're capable of more than you think you are it's really interesting. Uh, and you're able to actually get through whatever the difficulty is that you're facing that day mm. uh, so I really do believe it's a habit do you think Yasmin that the more challenges you're presented with the better it equips you for the bigger challenges when they come along? Definitely. I think, you know, if you look back on the things that you were able to get through, it always gives you confidence to get through whatever it is that you're facing on that day. And if they are, you know, if they are mounting challenges, if they are bigger or different, you still have the skills that you can call upon to get you through those mm. moments if you pay attention to them. Right. And it is all about reflection, self-reflection and understanding what your strengths are. All right. Right now, I don't want to wait any longer. I want to talk about that moment in Martin <laughs> I know Place. What's coming. <laughs> <laughs> in Martin Place, yes. where you were dancing with a random stranger mm -hmm. and it went viral. So, yes. you know the incident better than any of us do. Talk me through what happened. Uh, so, we were, we were down there, there was a DJ playing. I always love a good tune. And we were watching this older gentleman, his name in the end I found out was Gabriel. And he's a regular at a, at a surf club in the north, uh, in the south, that, you know, he's a dancer all the time right uh, but look he was dancing and we were all watching him as police officers you know trying not to laugh too much but he was having a great time um, really just in his own element and he turned around at one point and he caught my eye and when he caught my eye he started walking very quickly towards me and I wasn't sure if I needed to go for my gun or if, I, <laughs> if something else was happening but I sort of got the gist of what he was doing when he approached me and he, he challenged me to a dance off uh -huh. which far be it for me to ever decline such a lovely request I thought I'd better go with it 
And so I had this lovely moment with him. We, we had a dance to Pitbull, I think it was. <laughs> and I didn't think too much about it, you know, ironically, as a police officer, as an adult, I didn't actually think for a moment about the amount of people around me with their phones in the air. And so I thought, you know, I'd done a fantastic job engaging the community that day. And I went back to my command and as soon as I walked in, my commander has just yelled out in this booming voice, Constable London, get in my office. Oh taken a big deep breath. I had no idea what he was what he was going to say to me and I walked in there and he, and he said to me, he leaned over his desk very serious and he said, so the TV show Sunrise have called, uh, the Today Show have called, 2GB, Nova, Today FM, they all want to interview Australia's dancing cop. And so uh, I did go on Sunrise, I taught Koshi my signature dance move, the Samurai and how to mix the bowl and do the shopping trolley. <laughs> uh, but great. in the end, thankfully, uh, it was received really, really well. You know, in the end, people really appreciated that while police wear many hats, while we have situations that we really do need to be very serious in, uh, the flip side is that we're human beings and it's really important to remember the person behind the uniform. And I sure. think that's what, what that, that video taught everybody. What was going through your mind at that exact moment when that gentleman came up to you and asked you to dance? I just thought, you know, this is how you connect with people. You don't stand there with your arms crossed and say, no, sorry, I can't. You connect with them on a human level. Mm -hmm. I think that that ability to stay human in any situation is such a powerful thing. People want to be treated with respect, with kindness, with empathy, uh, and they really appreciate authenticity when you're dealing with them as well. It seems to me, Yasmin, that you've just mentioned a whole number of attributes of leadership there. Yes. Empathy, engagement, mm -hmm. uh, connectivity. Yep, yep. Absolutely. I think they are they are really, well, I often go back to what I call the core four, you know, the, the skills that you need to lead, to make an impact, uh, to be a change maker. Mm. And it all comes back to humanity. You know, the way to get people to follow your lead is to value them, yeah. uh, is to make them feel connected to a cause, having meaning. That's why people turn up to work every day, um, not for quotas, not for, you know, a strategic plan. They, they come because their heart tells them to and because they want to be part of, you know, something bigger than themselves. Yeah. We're talking about leadership lessons with Yasmin London today. She is the executive director of YSAFE and a cyber safety expert. And we're going to get to that shortly. <laughs> Yasmin, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you so much.